my father my father dear lord in the mighty name of jesus christ we come and we come to say thank you for what you've already done what you're doing right now and what you are about to do dear lord we acknowledge our insufficiency we acknowledge god that we can do nothing without you but fail and die to death for it's only through christ that we can do all things who strengthens us thank you lord for strengthening us this night and i thank you lord for touching every person under the sound of my voice bless them with listening ears and receptive hearts to hear the word of god receive the word of god apply the word of god and be blessed thereby for your own glory in the mighty name of jesus satan the lord rebuke you you have no right to have no place here the blood of Jesus prevail against you. I speak this night that the word of God will have free course. And it will accomplish that that God wanted to accomplish for the honor and the glory of Almighty God our Father. Thank you, dear Lord, for the deep understanding and revelation knowledge of your holy word. That we may be able to rightly divide the word of God. In Jesus' name. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Clap your hand and give Jesus a clap offering and to take your seat. <laughs> Praise God. Amen and amen. God bless tonight. Thank you, Administrative Assistant Lee, for the word of introduction. God bless Bishop Johnson. And uh, I say this with all sincerity, we really appreciate Bishop Johnson for all the wonderful things that he has done for us in the South Carolina jurisdiction. God bless Bishop Kershaw. May God bless him. Amen. God bless uh, uh, Administrative Assistant Lee and Administrative Assistant Prelo and Administrative Assistant Johnson and Administrative Assistant McClooney, the man that preached the house down last night. Amen. And God bless uh, Administrative Assistant James Summers, one of my spiritual sons, always come all the way from Atlanta to be with me. Where are you? He's somewhere around right here. Oh, all right. God bless. Amen and amen. So glad to have. My daughter with us all the way from Arizona tonight. Ian and Nicole Ben. God bless you. God bless. God bless. Amen. And God bless all of our superintendents. God, we've got the best superintendents. God bless all of them. To all of our pastors, God bless you. All the pastors, God bless you. Thank you so much. And to all of the Elders and ministers to all our brothers. God bless you, brothers. God bless you. God bless Mother Rivers. God bless you, Mother. Amen. God bless Mother Moody. God bless you, Mother Moody. And uh, God bless you, um, Executive Assistant. Where are you? God bless you. Good to see you. God bless you. And to all of the leading women of God. God bless every one of you. And all of you in your respective places, all the district missionaries, and all of you in your respective places, God bless you. And thank God for you. Pop Corson, our, our superintendent, uh, some year, many years ago, he used to say, if the if the women ever decide to leave the church, I'm going with them. Because we praise God for the women. Certainly the women plays a great part 
in our church. We thank God for each and every one of them. We appreciate you. We don't take you for granted, but we appreciate you from the depths of our heart. And God bless the other half of me. Amen. Ina, I've seen Prevo. God bless. Amen. God bless. Amen. Amen. We thank God for uh, my wife. She's such, been such a great source of help to me. And she don't know when I get into my secret closet, that God, I just want to thank you for my wife. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. And so we bless God. And I want to tell you, brother, when you got a good wife, you better thank God for it. Yeah. Amen and amen. Pray the name of God. Amen. All right, we have heard that God has really, really met us here this week, and we've heard some great preaching. Uh, uh, I mean great preaching all week. God has honored that consecration prior to this convention and have blessed us in this meeting. Amen. So since you've heard uh, great preaching all week long, I'm going to teach you a little short lesson of even going our way home. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Pray the name of God. All right, if you have your Bible, would you like to, for you to turn with me to the book of beginnings? Genesis. The book of beginnings. Genesis chapter 12. Glory to God. Chapter 12, and we're going to look at verse... One through three. Won't you just stand for the word of God, will you please? Amen and amen. Genesis chapter 12, verse one through three. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from among thy kindreds, and from thy father's house, and to a land that I will show thee. Verse 2, And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great. God said, I'm going to make your name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them. Hallelujah. That curse thee. And in thee, shall all families of the earth be blessed. In addition to that, over to Zechariah, go back to Zechariah again tonight. Chapter 4 and verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. I want to talk to you from the top of the night, the mission. Let me hear you shout, the mission. God bless you, you may be seated. Let me hear the real saint shout, the mission. One of the definitions for the word mission is the fact of being sent on some special work or service. God called Abraham for a most important mission. The Father sent Jesus on a mission to Calvary. Preachers and missionaries 
are on a mission. God called you and commissioned you through his Holy Son, Jesus Christ. What are you doing with your mission? Lay members, if you are born again and filled with the Spirit, you are also on a mission. You weren't called just to sit on the pew. Your mission, if not other, is to spread the love of Jesus Christ and to be a witness for him to others. When God called Abraham, one of his first commands was to separate himself from his father's house. Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Abraham and his family were idolaters, for so those of you don't know it. They were all the worshipers. But God wants to use Abraham. So he called him out. Oh, bless the name of God. He must leave his father's house and follow God's directives. Oh, bless the name of God. When God chose Abraham, he chose a man of faith. But he was not a perfect man. He made some mistakes. Uh-huh. I am glad that God uses imperfect people. If Abraham had been totally perfect, no wavering of faith, then it would be a discouragement to you and to me to know that we could not be used by God. God can use us even with our imperfections. Glory to God. Let me tell you something, saints. Listen. When you give your life to God, God wants us to be real saints. But if you make a mistake, get rid of it. Go to God and pray and repent of it. Don't try to fool God. Because you can't. Don't even try to fool yourself because you can't. Oh, bless the name of God. God knows just exactly who we are. And if you make a mistake, God is faithful and just to forgive you if there is true repentance. Then what did I say? True repentance. Because if, if there's not true repentance, God's not going to even hear you. There has to be true repentance repentance. Oh, bless the name of God. Yes, Abraham did not make the toll break that God commanded. Take covenant in knowing that God will take you in the state that you are. And by the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, begin his work in you. To change you. To transform you into the image of Christ. Oh, bless the name of God. I want you to notice when God, 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 God went and picked an uh, idol worshiper. Did you hear me? You see, because God doesn't look at the outward appearance. 
but he looks at the heart. And God saw that he could use Abraham to be the father of many nations. God saw that he could use Abraham to be the one that through his life the Savior would come into the world. Oh, bless the name of God. But I want you to notice something, Sam. God told Abraham he had to leave something. He had to leave something. Look at the person next to you. If you're going to be a child of God, you've got to leave something. If you're going to be a vessel of God, you've got to leave something. You've got to leave something. You've got to push something away from you. You've got to push something behind you. You've got to push your bad attitude behind you. Oh, God, help me here. Help me, Jesus. Help me. Help me, Jesus. Hallelujah. You've got to push your sinful habits behind you. Oh, bless the name of God. You've got to change your mind, change your attitude, change your way. You have got to leave something. Glory to God. And when, when I want you to notice something. God could not use Abraham until he did what? He leaves something. When you are willing to leave something, God can use you. Sometimes it means leaving something that you don't want to leave. Sometimes it might mean leaving, leaving a situation that you really don't want to leave. But if you want God to use you, if you want God's best, you've got to push it aside and leave something. Somebody shall leave something, leave something. Oh, bless the name of God. Yes, yes, yes. Leave, leave something. You got to leave something. Yes. Uh, God uh, gave Abraham a threefold promise. If you notice in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 3. A, God promised the land. B, uh, the promise of many nations. C, he would be he would bless him and make him a blessing. Let me tell you something, saints. I don't care what you have or where you are. God can do better than you're doing now. Because when the Lord gets through with you, you're going to be better. Look at the person next to you and say, when the Lord gets through with you, you're going to be better. Oh, bless the name of God. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. God said, I will bless you. Matter of fact, if you notice, the three great religions of the world can be traced, can trace its roots back to Abraham. Judaism, Abraham. Islam, Abraham. Christianity, Abraham. They all trace their root right back to Abraham. Let me tell you something. When God said, I'm going to make you great. Praise the name of God. And God will make you great if he can trust you. Oh, God, help me here. Did you hear what I said? God will make you great if he can trust you. Lord, help me to tell the truth in that for a few minutes. God can make you great if he can trust you. Let that settle in for a second. How the situation, I learned a story about a man. He was a faithful tither to his church. God blessed him with a few millions. Went to the pastor. Told the pastor, the pastor, 
Man, I'm giving a lot of money to this church. And, uh, and uh, Pastor said, you want me to pray? He said, yeah, man, please pray because I, I'm really giving a lot of money to this church. Said, Pastor said, give me your hand. So he said, Lord, you have blessed your brother from, you brought him from nothing to riches. And Lord, I want you to take back those riches from him because he, he got tired worshiping you. Praise God. Listen, saints, listen. If God blesses you, don't get the behead. Don't get the big head. I got to move on here, but I want to encourage my sense because when, when a leader finds out how to be blessed, he wants the people of God know the same secret because God, God wants them blessed too. He wants to see them blessed. And I want to tell you something, saints. God said in the word, they that honor me, I will honor. That's what God says. They that honor me, I will honor. I want to say to the saints of God, saints, you never go wrong honoring God. Did you hear what I say? You never go wrong honoring God. Press the name of God. Now, let me hear you shout. I'm going to hit something right now that you're going to get a little quiet in here. Tithing. Are y'all still ready? Let me hear you shout tithing. tithing. Now tithing, there, 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 there are some folks who haven't really studied their Bible concerning tithing. Because you can tell that because they said tithing is, a, 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 is an old law practice. Mm -hmm. Then you go back and study. Because tithing did not start under the law. Tithing started 400 years before the law came into existence when Abraham paid tithe in Melchizedek. Tithing continued through the law up to the time of Christ. That's why Jesus endorsed it in Matthew 23, 23. This you ought to do and not to leave the other undone. Do all of it, he said. Praise the name of God. So you do yourself a favor and a blessing when you honor God. And don't, defy, don't try to find justifiable reason not to obey the word of God. Because God knows exactly what to do. God can bless you and promote you and God can demote you. God can make you rich and he can make you poor. Did you ever forget that? The smart thing to do is to honor God with all that you got. Never think it's too much to give to God. It all belongs to him. The Bible says that the earth is the... I almost heard you. Is the what? And the what? All of it belongs to God. You think you own your car. You don't own it. God's own it. You think you own your bank account, you don't own it, God's own it. You think you own your home, you don't own it, God's own it. The earth is the Lord and the And they that dwell therein. Bless the name of God. Yes, yes, let me move on here, let me move on here. Yes, yes, yes. God will bless you if he can trust you. Mm -hmm. The mark, another mark of a great man is that he... He, that he must be noble of character and, and, and uh, generous. Example, giving Abraham gave Lot, you all remember the story, Abraham gave Lot the first choice of the land. Let me tell you something, saints. You never go wrong to do good. You don't lose when you humble yourself. Abraham was the oldest, Lot was the nephew. So, but yet he gave Lot the first choice of the land. 
See, when you know the secret of being blessed by God, nobody can take from you what God wants you to have. Oh, bless the name of God. The Bible said, look at this. The Bible said that Abraham was very rich. God made him very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Can y'all have some riches? Oh, bless the name of God. Hallelujah. Every person who is on a mission from God must never forget to give God. God the glory. I could have spent a couple of seconds right there. You never forget to give God the glory. Don't let your head swell to the point that you forget to give God the glory. Don't forget where you came from that you don't remember to give God the glory. Don't get lifted up in pride to the point that you forget to give. Don't forget to give God the glory. Do you hear what I say? Don't forget to give God the glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Every person, every person, every person who is on a mission from God must never forget what? To give God the glory. When God blesses you, give God the glory. Don't go and say, I, 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 me, myself, and I. Because if it had not been for God. Did you hear what I say? If it had not been for God, you would have never been blessed. You would have never had good health. You will never have a life. Had it not been for God. I said, had it not been for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't get, you, don't, you, you didn't get where you are or accomplish what you accomplished if God had not blessed you. Did you hear what I say? Mm -hmm. Psalm 75, 6 and 7 tell us promotions. Let me tell you shout promotions. It says promotion does not come from the east. It does not come from the west. It does not come from the south. But I want you to notice something. Read that passage. The north is not mentioned there. And the reason why the north is not mentioned, because the north means up. Yeah. I'm going up north, down south, out west and east. So the north means up. That means it comes from up. It comes from God. Yeah. It comes from heaven. Somebody say glory, hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, listen, listen. The more God blesses you, I've learned the secret. I, and I'm going to move on here for a few minutes. The more God blesses you, Spend more time with him. If you really want to get God's attention, attention, spend time with him. If you really want to get the best that God has for you, spend more time with him. Did you hear what I say? Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 said, Pray without ceasing. Let that prayer be turn in your heart daily, 24-7. Let it turn in your heart. Pray the name of God. It can turn even while you're working. Oh, bless the name of God. Verse 18 says, in, in everything, in everything, I'm talking about those saints that are on a mission, in everything, in everything, in everything, give thanks. In everything. In other words, listen, saying, listen, Zion, for a few minutes, say, listen, God says in his word, in everything. Give thanks. Now he didn't say thank, thank him for everything. But he said in it. So while those tests come, thank him. While those trials come, thank him. When things are not going the way you want them to go, thank him. When things are not working 
the way you want them to work. Thank him. Because if you learn how to praise him, no telling what the Lord might do. No telling what door he might open. One thing I love about God is he opens a door. No man can shut it. I don't care who don't like you. I don't care who will work against you. I don't care who talk about you. No man. I said no man can shut your door. Somebody said glory. Y'all sit down for a second. Y'all sit down. Right. Sit down for a second. Glory to God. Let me hear you shout the mission. Give me a few minutes. The mission. The mission. So listen, saints. As I said, don't ever forget to do what? To give God. Now, I want you to have the person next to you. Tell your sister, brother, next to you. Tell him, don't you ever forget to give God the glory. Isaiah 42, and it said, I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another. Neither my praise to graven images. You got to be careful. You got to give God glory. If, if you don't believe me, acting Herod, it's a dangerous thing to take God's glory. Acts chapter 12, verse 21 to 23. And upon a set day Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto his people. And the people gave a shout, saying, it is the voice of a God and not of a man. Terrible mistake. And immediately, the Bible says immediately, the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory. And he was eaten of worms. That must have been a terrible sight. The worms eat him alive. He was eaten of worms and he gave up the ghost. Don't forget to do what? Give God. On this mission, every child of God is on a mission. Don't forget on your mission to give God the glory. Oh, bless the name of God. Somebody say glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Another mark of a great man is that he must be a man of faith. We get to learn how to trust God. Talking is not going to do it. You got to trust God. You got to believe it when you don't see it. You got to trust God when you can't hear it. You got to learn how to trust God. Hallelujah. One of the greatest things that was said about Abraham was that he believed God. He believed God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He believed God. We who are on a mission for God, faith must be priority. Did you hear what I say? There were failures and success in the life of Abraham. And there were seven tests which God took him through. Test number one, to leave his home and go to a land that God would show him. He didn't know where he was going, but he trusted God because he believed in God. He trusted that God would do the right thing by him. Somebody said, Glory. Test number two. Then there was a famine in the land of Canaan. 
God, God, God wants you and want me to learn how to trust him through difficult times when it looks bad, when it's not working good, when it's going in the opposite direction. I said, God wants us to trust him. Number three, God tested him with great riches. Can God trust you with great riches? I said, God tested him with great riches. Sometimes the saints are tested with much. And sometimes, sometimes the saints are tested with less. Never mind, the Lord is going to test you. If you're on this mission for God, you are going to be tested somehow and some way. But your mind got to be made up that I'm going all the way. I'm too far now to give up. I'm too far down the road to throw in the towel. Rain going to come. Storm going to come. Hurricane blow with an adversity raise. But God, I said, God will always be there by your side. He said, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Somebody say glory. Hallelujah. On this mission, I said, on this mission, you got to keep moving. You're going to be talked about. You're going to be scandalized. They're going to drag your name in the mud. But God, I said, God will be there with you. He'll lift you up. He'll turn you around and place your feet on a higher ground and establish you going. Somebody say, Lord. Everybody stand to your feet. I want to slow down. I want to leave this with you. Listen to me, saints of God. We are on a mission. A mission for God. Listen to me carefully. On this mission that we are on, you are going to be tested. When God called you on the mission, you must understand that there are going to be blessing and tests. But the word of God says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. And then he throw the conjunction in there, but the Lord deliver him out, out of them all. So saints, if you're going through a test, if you're going through a test, you've got something to look forward to. The Bible said God will bring you out of... I can't hear you. So the next time the devil stop by your house, and try to give you a word of discouragement. Let the devil know that I'm just passing through here. And I'm not going to stay here, but I'm just passing through. The test is not forever, but the test is for a season. Your delivery date has already been placed on God's calendar. If you can hold out, somebody shall hold out. Hold out until the Lord get through with you. Hold out until you get through your tests. Hold out until you get through your trial. Somebody say glory.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. Lift those hands up. Lift those hands up. I want you to take your mind off of everybody, off of everything, and put it on one person, not Jesus. And while your hands are lifted up, I want you to begin to praise God. Now, some of you all in this house here tonight, you all had requests before God for a long time. Some of you all even questioned God, God. God, how long? God never slumbers, God never sleeps. God has forgotten about you. He has forgotten about you. But if you can hold out and wait on God, hallelujah. 